Hello, I'm Arthur, uh, and I'm going to be showing you guys my nine months on testosterone updates. So this is kind of crazy to be here. I know everyone says this, but when I was first starting testosterone, it felt like nine months was an eternity away. And then I guess also passage of time during this pandemic has been kind of surreal. Uh, but anyways, here we are, nine months on testosterone, flew by, um, and I'm like very happy. So I'm gonna first talk about face changes and then I'm gonna show you guys my uh, voice clips, which I did keep even though I uh, missed out on actually doing the videos. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, talk about uh, body changes I've experienced, then I'm gonna talk about um, facial hair, body hair, and then I'm lastly gonna talk about emotional changes being on testosterone. So I guess to start off for the face changes, um, so I will put up here uh, photos of myself uh, pre-testosterone um, and uh, you know, and going through the months, uh, but I've noticed, uh, you know, that my jaw has gotten more angular, um, and that my, uh, you know, generally I look sort of like sharper and less round in my facial features. It's something that's sort of unplaceable to me, uh, what looks different, you know, in my, in my face between, uh, pre-testosterone to now, but even more than just because there were times when before speaking pre-testosterone I was passing as male, um, there's something about, uh, especially these past few months, that I feel as if my face looks more like a man's face rather than like a small boy, which is good because it's not fun to be like in your 20s and looking like, you know, 14. Um, so I really liked that. Um, I don't have an Adam's apple, maybe not really. I also have a thyroid condition, so that leaves a little bit of a goiter that's hard to distinguish between an Adam's apple and um, that, but haven't experienced that, but no big deal. I think maybe my, my nose is a bit larger in a way that I like. My eyebrows have always been very thick, but I really stopped plucking them, um, you know, when I started to transition, and so they've really grown out. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing has been sort of a subtle change in my jawline. Um, yeah, you'll see that up there. Um, all right, I'll put in the voice updates. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice three days on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice two months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice three months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice four months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice five months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice six months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice seven months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice eight months on testosterone. Hi, my name's Arthur, and this is my voice nine months on testosterone. All right, now for body. Um, so I think the biggest change actually, and as a point of optimism for those of you guys who are pre-T and watching this, I had far more changes um, in my body pre-testosterone than on testosterone. So before I started to transition, um, so I'm 5'8", and uh, when I was like realizing I was trans, cutting my hair, all that stuff, I weighed, uh, I think like 130, 135 pounds. Um, and so I can, um, you can see here that I like, um, I was very, uh, you know, I, I, most of that was in my hips. I had very narrow shoulders um, and, you know, I just had a very like slight body. Um, and then when I realized um, I wanted to transition, but that testosterone was quite a bit away from me um, because I chose to freeze my eggs and also have a very long doubt process. Both of these things I'll talk about. Um, and uh, so I, I, the only thing I could control uh, in regards to my physical transition really was my, um, uh, was was my body and was through breaking out. So I started uh, really aggressively working out pre-testosterone, doing pull-ups, uh, or do, rather doing assisted pull-ups, and eventually one singular pull-up pre-testosterone, which I was pretty proud of. Um, and you can see here that there's like a very significant change in my in my body, um, like pre-T. Um, so, and then certainly on testosterone, I've basically gotten all that and more while doing very little effort. I do work out now, and it, especially this past few months, I've been working out a lot. But um, there was a chunk of time where, like, you know, it was the pandemic. I was, you know, doing my PhD coursework. I was very busy, uh, so I was not working out. But I, I, at the end of this like period of like five months of not working out, so it took me about it took me six months of intense working out pre testosterone to be able to do one pull up. I, I then start testosterone, do my PhD, stop working out for months and months and months. At the end of like I don't know four months, I'm like, oh, can I do a pull up? I go, I can just do a pull up. You know, no, no work. That's testosterone for you. Um, but yeah, so so my my upper body has continued to build, and it ha it's happened kind of subtly and um, in a really cool way. So when I, I I went on a spending spree of buying new clothing um, because I wanted to look like an adult man, um, you know, like when I started testosterone, and I bought a bunch of extra small shirts. Um, 
largely because like, some people in my life are like, oh, you know, just commit to the fact you're going to be an extra small guy. Like, you know, don't buy aspirational clothing. And I do agree with that. Don't buy aspirational clothing. Buy clothing that fits your body type. But I'm now a size small. <laughs> and so all these colored shirts I bought, they look kind of ridiculous on me now. Like they like just, I don't know, they don't fit me. I'm a size small. Um, so that's been cool. I will strip for you guys now. <laughs> don't make it weird. Um, so I'm wearing trans tape, by the way. Let's see if I can do this. Um, but yeah, so I'm still obviously like very scrawny, um, but yeah, my shoulders are pretty broad and I guess relative to the baseline pics, my, my hips have definitely narrowed out. Um, so I don't know, <laughs> this is pretty, pretty dorky of me. Anyways, I'm happy. Um, let's see, I'll pull on my shirt again. Um, I'm happy and continuing to actively work out now, which, you know, is helping things as one would expect. Um, so yeah, that's that. Now my hair's all messed up. Um, all right. So then we're talking about hair. Uh, first, I guess hair on the top of my head. People had said that testosterone would make my hair curly. I don't know about that. I, my, my hair was dead ass straight before testosterone and it's like maybe a bit wavy. I like the texture. I think my hair looks pretty cool. I'm a fan, um, uh, but that, and then this amazing beard. I mean, I can't believe no one's commented on it yet. I, I was talking with my dad and my dad, I, I hadn't seen him for a couple months. And so, um, you know, I, I saw him and he was like, wow, like Arthur, you know, you really, your shoulders are way broader. Like you're looking really muscular. And I was like, thank you, dad. Like, that's so nice. And I was like, and my beard too. Right. And then he was like, he just laughs and he's like, okay, dream on. And I was like, okay, I pushed it. So you can't see it on the camera, which also means you can't see it in real life, but I know it's there. So I'll just try. I'll try. Mm, no, no, it's not gonna show up. There are these blonde stubby hairs on my chin and then there are these slightly darker hairs on my mustache area. Um, and so my, my texture of my, uh, the texture of my face feels very different to pre-testosterone. So like, I, I can feel that there are facial hairs here and it's not like peach fuzz, it's like blonde, blonde facial hairs. And, um, you know, you might have noticed in my, uh, my voice updates that I, you know, the one that was on my eight months, I had tried dyeing it and it looks kind of disgusting when I try to dye it. Um, so I would not recommend, but, but I, I think that's cool. And like, you know, I, I don't, I didn't go into testosterone, like needing a beard. And so I'm, I'm taking what I'm going to get and I'm pretty happy with this sort of like stubble feeling. It just feels cool. Um, I have been using minoxidil for like three months and I didn't even really have the blonde stubble until then. So I think I just don't have it really that like most amazing facial hair genes. Uh, you know, also it is only nine months and you know, some guys it takes them like, um, you know, a couple years. And I talked to my dad and he said that, um, he said that, so he, he was also late to start puberty, but even still he couldn't grow a beard in college. And now he, if he want, if my mom would allow him, he can grow a beard. Um, he's like physically capable of it, if not uh, socially capable. Um, so I'm hopeful that at some point I will be able to grow a beard. Uh, then I guess also I do have, uh, I have a happy trail now. I'm not gonna just show that to you guys cause that's kind of weird. And then my leg hair is very dense. Um, I don't know. Also not gonna show it just cause I don't want to re-angle the camera. It's a, it's a pain, but you can trust me. My hair, my legs have gotten way more dense and hairy. And I guess also another note, um, that I, I'll put up a photo of this here, but is that my my hips really have narrowed out. And so that's one of those things that I knew I was really wanted pre-testosterone. Um, so I used to wear a 31-30 in pants. Now I wear um, a 30-30 mostly, but also you can just, it fits me differently. So this is the same same pair of black jeans. And I think that in the one that I'm on testosterone in, I think that's actually from a couple of months ago as it is. So it, it's continued even still that um, right now, right now I am the same weight that I was um, starting testosterone, but less, less, less in the bottom, more on the top, which is, that's, that's the goal. You know, the, the, what is the pizza shape? I'm not sure, uh, but that's happening. Okay. And then the last part of this update is the emotional changes. So, um, I think I could even make a whole video about this, but easily the most surprising and like wonderful part about testosterone for me has been the emotional changes. So, um, I went into testosterone like a very anxious person and thinking like, okay, I just want to get the like permanent physical changes so that if medical things happen, you know, if whatever happens, I'm able to stop testosterone and then, you know, I have a beard and like, you know, I will continue to be able to live as a man, even if I'm a man with an estrogen dominant body. Um, and I've seen plenty of guys on YouTube and just, you know, that who, 
who stop testosterone and continue living as men and have a perfectly fine time of it, um, especially you know, you get the voice drop, you know, things like that. They just stick. Um, and uh, what was I say? Um, and uh, yeah, so so that was my plan. You know, obviously I was like, okay, it would be nice to stay on testosterone forever, but like, you know, I, I get, I just like want to get the, want to get the voice, want to get the beard, and then I can reassess. Now that I'm on it, I'm like, oh my god, I really want to stay on testosterone forever, and in a good way, in all the positive ways. I just like it has felt so mentally like the right hormone for me, and I'm like a pretty like I'm a sciencey person. I don't believe in this sort of like, you know, I don't know, right, wrong, like voodoo. It's a, it's a drug. It's a drug. It shouldn't feel like this, right? But but it does. Um, so. Um, I guess to be specific about the ways, um, so people talk about not being able to cry on testosterone, and I always heard about that as like a scary thing, um, and I haven't cried on testosterone, not really, but in a way that has felt very right, so I handle emotions like I feel as if I'm supposed to handle emotions, and I think part of that is growing up too, so I think, honestly, if you're, you know, if you're a 17-year-old trans guy who's starting your transition at age 17, your experience might be different, right, because like, there's something very particular about going through a puberty while being an adult with adult coping skills. And so like, you might have the like authentic teenage puberty experience, which is cool in its own right. But um, I kind of found that like, all these things people talk about, about like, you know, not feeling, um, not feeling as sort of like, cause I would burst into tears at random moments, you know, I would be all over the place, you know, th that kind of thing. And like, you know, the sort of like the anger, like all that stuff, like with the right coping mechanism, it just feels more like I'm in control. Like the, the anger to me, I'm not lashing out at people. I know how to not lash at pe out at people. I like am aware of that, but I do feel more confident and more like, um, you know, more like ready to stand my ground, but th that's not anger. You know, anger is like when you have, when you're confident, ready to stand your ground, but you don't have like the common sense about like when to call it quits. Um, so that's been really nice. I have, um, I've noticed sort of changes to my sexuality that have felt incredibly correct. Um, so that's not just sort of like the ways in which, that's not just who I'm attracted to, like, am I gay, bi, or straight, but sort of the manner in which I'm attracted to people. It feels more visual, um, it feels more sort of like, um, like a gut feeling rather than sort of like a, like, I, when I, when I, you know, pre-testosterone, I sort of would have to have these sort of like mental, like, convoluted, like, I don't know, like, convoluted sort of stories to get myself into someone. Like, I would sit there and, like, be in AP chemistry or whatever, you know, back in the day, and, um, you know, fantasizing about someone. And now, it doesn't feel like that, it just feels like, like, I'm into that person. You know, there's sort of a directness that feels like it comes with testosterone, and a stability, um, and it feels really good. And it's hard to put into words exactly what I'm, you know, feeling. It just, like, I'd heard people talk about this before, but when you're living it, it's like, oh my god, I feel really calm, I feel really good. Um, and then... And I guess um, the last element, I think, and it's hard to mix up, of course, like, what is the fact that, you know, what's the fact that I'm, I'm, you know, having a great time in my life right now. I have, like, an awesome set of friends, a transition, not just medically, but transition is going really well for me, and what is, like, testosterone. So it gets conflated, right? But, um, but I found that I've had, in this time, like, been able to reflect more and, like, take more, like, onus for who I am and what I've done, mistakes I've made, and who I want to be. So like, there's something almost like a spiritual experience of being on hormones for me. So like, I've, I've reflected on times in my life where like, um, I felt like I was in the wrong, like where at the time, you know, like at the time I was in a really bad place and I was very much like a, um, you know, I was needing a lot of support from friends and I was kind of spiraling and I was like a wreck and um, you know, and very needy, and at the time I had to kind of villainify, uh, villainify? I don't know if that's a word, but anyways, make the, make those people into villains in my life who weren't there to support me, and now I sort of really, because I really feel like it's not a game anymore, I'm living my life, I am me, I am like living 100% authentically, all that, I, there's that feeling of wanting to reflect back on that and be like, no, um, it was more complex, it was nuanced, you know, I was making mistakes then, and now I have my life in control, like, I don't need to make those same mistakes again. I can admit that I've made mistakes and go on and like, you know, do positive things. And so it's both been reflecting back on my past and being like, oh, what were the things that I really love about myself and what were the places I made a mistake? But then also sort of like an excitement for the future and a feeling of like, um, a feeling of like pride and confidence in the things that I do love about myself. So it's sort of like the best of both worlds of feeling self-actualized, like both feeling, um, both feeling positively about the things that are positive and feeling like a, I can make change and I can take control of the things that, um, you know, that I'm, I'm, I wasn't a fan of or the mistakes I made in life. Um, so that's sort of the emotional changes. 
I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird experience. Like I like going through, you know, I feel very male socialized at this point. Um, you know, I like, I interact with people in my life and on the street as a guy and it's profoundly different from when I was living as a woman and in a way that's almost unplaceable and all of it like it's so hard to say what's going on but it's just good and it's right and it's awesome <laughs> so that's where we are as for the upcoming months and what I'm hoping um, I am getting my levels tested next week and maybe adjusting my doses because I've been on my dosage because I've been on a very low dosage for this whole time I don't know I <laughs> It's been great, why not more? Um, you know, of course my doctor will determine that. Um, so the things I would like, I, I'm, you know, hoping to continue to build up my upper body. Um, I'm trying to like work on my pecs in particular because I sort of had this um, uh, like sort of fancy of like being like, um, you know, like Ty Turner, for example, there are trans guys out there who, who choose to not have top surgery. Um, and I think likely I will go for top surgery, uh, but you know, not like both i want to give myself the shot of building up my chest muscle to feel comfortable in my body and maybe not need it and also if i do get top surgery um get better results if you have bigger pecs so trying to work on my upper body um i am passively trying to li like learn lose a little bit of a you know of a quarantine weight that i put on in january and that's still kind of shedding but not a big deal i am Hoping that the lovely beard continues to come in, but you know, it will come in at its own pace. Um, yeah, and that's basically that. I mean, the the big, quick, exciting changes have already happened, but I think the 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 the, the changes that have happened um, at this late on testosterone have been sort of surprising in their own right because they're not the voice change. I mean, you heard my voice my voice after video. I think my voice has been the same since like six, seven months on testosterone, um, but it's been like sort of these things about like looking more like a man rather than a boy and that's been really important to me like I used to think that the only thing that mattered to me was passing um but then I started passing and it was like no I also want to look my age I want to feel my age I want to just you know be like a normal dude who happens to shoot up testosterone from time to time um and also who's transgender and like you know happy about all that so you know it's the, the double standard of both being a normal guy and being cool with my transness but anyways um and so it's been very cool in these most recent months to be experiencing changes that are both like sort of more age appropriate changes and um and i've thought that's i found that very cool um so yeah um i will see you guys for maybe a 10 months on testosterone update but more realistically a one year on testosterone update